Okay, we now come to the final part of this uh, analysis of the Atlas 2.0 version 2. Um, I've been collecting data over the last three weeks and I've got wind speeds between naught and just over six, six and a half meters per second. Now that's sort of between tw the maximum 22, 24 kilometers per hour, about 12 knots. That's a pretty decent wind. I mean, you know, honestly, if you, uh, if you manage to get more than six meters per second as a steady wind speed, you are really in a great place. For most people in domestic situations, they're going to be experiencing wind speeds between three and a half to six average. Um, so this is really just to see whether this Atlas 2.0 can perform anywhere like they expected in uh, their, their original uh, performance graph. So look, I'm just going to get straight to it. This is the, uh, the chart that I've been uh, uh, generating. So as you can see, actually, Nothing, no power, no voltage, nothing between 0 and 3.5. And this is really down to the redesign of the version the version 2. It's the inertia required to get the uh, the gearing. So this is a 3 to 1 gearing. So uh, uh, I, if you see my previous videos, you will have seen there's a gearing ratio of 3 to 1 on the uh, shaft from the, t from the actual blades to the turbine itself. That means that basically at very low wind speeds, not to three and a half, you're gonna get nothing. The red line is the voltage, and you can see that will climb. So the voltage on the left-hand side, that climbs from zero. Uh, peaks around about 50. Uh, I didn't have enough readings after six, six and a half meters per second, uh, but it stabilizes between 48 and 50 and then starts driving uh, the power up. So if you can see in terms of power, uh, the power's on the, the right-hand scale here. So I'll keep it in, in this position. From four, you start to generate, but you can see between four, four and a half and five, you know, five uh, meters per second, you get into sort of, you know, 30, 40 watts. Uh, around about five and a half, you start hitting uh, around about 90 watts, six, 120, and the maximum I got uh, was at a six and a half uh, meters per second wind speed. I got 160 watts. Um, this is tied into the Delta uh, H3 inverter. It's the one that uh, tests up cell to go with this if you want a grid tie. Uh, the, the H3 uh, Delta is a pretty good inverter. It, it's certainly better than most um, standard, you know, particularly solar panel inverters you'll get. Uh, in that it actually operates at a relatively low voltage. It starts working around 30 volts, which is, uh, which is pretty low. Uh, but it means that um, you don't really start generating power, you know, until probably, you know, you're around uh, four and a half to five meters per second of wind speed. And at that point, you'll start generating. So let's have a look at the difference between the original Tessa performance chart and what we've seen uh, in reality. On the original chart, uh, they suggest obviously that you get uh, a sort of almost like a straight line uh, performance uh, increase from zero up to four meters per second. And that's just because it's bench uh, performance measurement. They just turn the turbine at a certain RPM and it obviously will it, it suggests it generates power. Uh, in the case of the uh, real life, for example, you get nothing between zero and 3.5 because the inertia required to turn the turbine blades with that gearing ratio of three to one means you get to literally no power until you get to three and a half, and then the turbine will start to turn. So, let's just think at uh, four uh, meters per second, you'll start generating at around about 12 volts and 200 watts, and then potentially up to uh, seven meters per second, 48 volts and about 500 watts. Uh, in reality, at four, instead of 200, you're getting about uh, 30, 30 watts. And then, well, I only got wind up to six and a half. I got to 160 watts and the, the voltage was stabilizing just over 50. So look, um, it's pretty conclusive. Uh, the bench performance of the test up two versus the reality. Uh, my advice to anybody considering the test up Atlas version two is if you're in a very, very windy location, you know, you're on the coast or you're really high up uh, on the hills 
and you're getting consistently over six and a half, seven meters per second. That's, uh, you know, 25, 26 kilometers per hour. It's sort of 13, 14 knots of wind. Then possibly this might work for you. Uh, but for anybody in a more domestic situation where you're just looking to sort of generate, generate uh, you know, power from wind uh, in a more, in a more sort of domestic, uh, you know, lower, uh, lower, lower sort of lower, lower lands region, uh, you just, it just is not going to be worth it for you. So don't buy the Tesla Atlas version two.